everybody. Welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. Today we're at Disneyland for Disney 100. It's the 100th anniversary of the company Disney. And we're here to eat some food, see some merch. There's a new ride. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway has opened. Are we going to get on it? <laughs> and also, World of Color 1, a new show at Disney California Adventure. Is it good? Is it bad? Come with us on, on this, this adventure. adventure. Sleeping Beauty's castle is all decked out for the 100th. What do you think? I saw a lot of photos of it. This is the first time that we're seeing it in person, and it looks quite beautiful. I love the fountains, and we're standing right next to one, and it like has a nice little spray of the water. Like, it feels good standing here. Yeah, I wonder if it'll be like lit up at night. Yeah, ooh, I didn't even think of that. But yeah, it looks very gorgeous. I love like the iridescent colors with, mixed with the purple. Looks good. So we woke up at 7 a.m tried to get into the virtual queue for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. We did not get it. Like, I feel like Kitra is usually the queen of the virtual queue, but we were not able to make it happen, so we're waiting for 1 p.m. and hopefully... Yeah, hopefully, or else the, the queen has fallen. So right now I have the world clock up, ready for 1 p.m. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. Join the virtual queue. I got in. You got in? I got it. I can't be too excited because like if someone didn't get it, I don't want to make them feel bad. But I got it. What time? 1.33 or 1.33. 200 minutes. So first up over at Jolly Holiday, we got the beef bedia toasted cheese. This is pepper jack cheese onion cilantro, salsa verde on sourdough served with consomme. And we've had this before, but I don't think we've ever featured it on the channel proper. It's one of our favorite things. It's like a seasonal dish here. So it's not here technically for Disney 100, but it is. <laughs> to be honest with you, a lot of the Disney 100 food is just like purple or lemon flavored. We're hungry. Oh, look at that. Oh yeah. <laughs> this sandwich is perfection. Obviously, it's crunchy on the outside with that toasted sourdough. The meat is just so juicy, along with the cheese. If you've never had bidia before, well, you should get some. <laughs> but this is like five out of five, Peter's. Ordinary Adventure Star. I already know because Kitcher's had it before. I had to get one of the Disney 100 desserts, and the one that I chose is the Platinum Trifle. This has chocolate cookie crumbles, cheesecake, cherry compote, chocolate cookie mousse, and creme fraiche chantilly cream. And what I love about this is it actually has a miniature chocolate medallion. You see these all around the park, and it's funny because everybody online is saying how ugly they are. Like, they look like they've been 3D printed. I'm one of those people. And you, you have a little one right on top and it looks just as bad. <laughs> it does. Just kidding. This is cute. This is a cute little dessert. It was one of like the better looking ones in there. Look at the little like things on there. I don't know what those are, but let's try it. This is very good. It basically just tastes like a cherry cheesecake with some like of the gray stuff or whatever on top that you could get over at the Red Rose Tavern. Very, very sweet. But I, I appreciate that it's such a small little size because any more of this like would be too much. It's because it's a four and a half out of five. I was fully expecting not to love this, but I think it's a nice little Disney 100 treat. And they also have a special Mickey sipper. It's him in his like new fancy shiny outfit. And they also have a tumbler. I like this tumbler because it has Mickey 
with Walt, and they're at like the studio, but it also has Carthay Circle, it has the castle, it has the carousel. There's some cool merch. We, we got to check out the merch later on today. a new Disney 100 cavalcade and it seems like with this celebration they're really trying to go for the emotional and the nostalgia and I love that and I love all the new outfits a plus Next up, we're gonna do the most non-Disney celebration thing possible and go to Galaxy's Edge. And you never see four stormtroopers together in Batuu. That's weird. We heard that over at Oga's Cantina, there's a brand new snack and a brand new drink. So you know we gotta try it. They have a new snack here at Ogus Cantina. It's called the Batu Wild Bounty. It's pastrami infused whipped cheese, mustard seed spears, pastrami, chervil, pickled ribbons, and pickled salt served with a warm focaccia bread. We're always looking for something more to eat here at Ogus. They got the drinks down. It's like a dissected pastrami sandwich. It has a little bit of spice to it. I'm not sure what spice is spicy. Is it like the mustard seeds? Is it that sauce? But it's good. I still think the five blossom bread is like worth coming from another galaxy to here. That said, I'd still give it like a four out of five here. And to wash that down, I had to get the Yub Nub. We've had this before, but it comes in a new souvenir cup. It's now blue, it's second edition. Of course, it has Endor and those pesky e Ewoks trying to fight the Empire. What, what do the space bears have against the Empire? I don't know. But it's basically like a, a space version of a Mai Tai. It's tropical. I'd give it like four and a half out of five beers. It, it's a very good choice. And then you also have to come here to get that souvenir. Oh. oh. Hey, who killed our DJ? Hey. hey, this guy killed our DJ. Hey, get him out of here! He's killing our DJ! <laughs> here we go! Hello, folks! I'm DJ Rex! This may be your first time here, and it's mine, too! <laughs> Let's get the cruising altitude with a tribute to a song that swept the galaxy! The new drink is called the Dantooine Tonic. This has mezcal, passion fruit syrup, ginger beer, and lime. I've heard that back on planet Earth, this is kind of like a passion fruit Moscow mule. And in case you didn't know, Dantooine is the planet in A New Hope when Vader is like interrogating Leia, asking where all the rebels are. Where is the rebel base? They're on Dantooine. There. You see, Lord Vader, she can be reasonable. Maybe that's why there's mezcal. It's like, it has like kind of like a smoky taste. Even though he didn't end up blowing up that planet, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Upon first impression, it's very sour. You could really, really taste the mezcal and the lime. You get a little bit of that passion fruit flavor, but whatever the salt is on the side, makes it so salty and sour. So when you take a sip of it, make sure to get some of that salt. I feel like you're either really gonna like this or really not gonna like it. I have a feeling it's gonna be very polarizing. I'm kind of like in between. I 
could already feel my stomach like being like, why, why are you drinking this? Oh. Oh. By the way, we're here with a friend, Chris Kidder. All right, let's try this. Let's see if it's as salty as everyone says. <laughs> so the more I drink this, the more I really, really think like the majority of the people trying this are not gonna like it. Like, you saw the reactions that we all gave. It's it's quite quite a lot. Is this the Beverly of Ogus Cantina? It's like definitely like worth trying if you want to try something weird. Just so you know, when you do order a souvenir mug at Ogas, they do give you a clean one in a box. And I want to show you this in the light because the colors on this are unreal. It's like a blue green. Look at the little Ewoks. And I think what I like about this the most green color in the inside there. Yeah. This is cool though. This is going in our collection. Whew, that drink put some hairs on my chest. It's like drinking lighter fluid. So if that sounds good to you, order it. <laughs> We're gonna take a quick break from Disneyland and hop on over to DCA to grab a few drinks with some friends. I know all the hubbub is over at Disneyland today, but here at Disney California Adventure, they have Buena Vista Street, which is basically about Walt coming to Los Angeles and forming the Disney company, which is why we celebrate Disney 100. So in my mind, DCA should be where you celebrate Disney 100. One of my favorite details on the statue of Walt is if you look down at the sole of the shoe, it says Marceline. That's where the shoes were made. That's also where Walt comes from. We followed the red car trolley over to the Hollywood back lot and we went to Hollywood Lounge where they have some new drinks. I got myself the Margarita Flight and this comes with three different margaritas. It comes with watermelon margarita, a cucumber margarita, a mango margarita. Each one has tequila, lime juice, triple sec, sour mix and chili lime seasoning and then of course whatever syrup you know mango watermelon my favorite clearly was the watermelon i am just like a watermelon connoisseur as you know mango was also pretty good pretty solid i think a lot of people are gonna like the mango but the one i did not like is the cucumber it was gross you can get these i think each for like 17 dollars or you can get the the smaller margarita flight for a dollar more so you could try a little of everything. My favorite was actually the cucumber, so Peter can't be trusted. Followed by the mango, followed by the watermelon, but that being said, they were all so surprisingly flavorful and fruity and good. I like this margarita flight. Of course, we're here with our friends Mouse Vibes. What just happened? Um, okay, so I was walking back from the restroom and like this entire area got silent and then you guys were like this. And I look and Cher, with her young little boo thing, was walking through. <laughs> oh my God. She looks great. Sherry was out here celebrating the hundred. <laughs> you had a moment like, who is this person? That's shit. Yeah, because there was a VIP tour that like just came out from over there. And I was like, I didn't know VIP tours came from over there. Well, only Cher really comes from there. We just found that out. You have to have one name to go through. That. Imagine looking that good at that age. Like, the girls. Did you guys miss it? She's 76. Wow. Yeah, we just walked past Yeah, she came, she came out right over there. She got dead quiet. And was like, no, wait, 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 we're at the We were at the We were like, is that a boy? Did you see Cher? No, I didn't. I heard she walked by, though. Right next to Avengers Campus is where they have the Black Panther celebration. Looks like Wakanda is not forever. They've begun transforming the Pacific Wharf area into San Francisco from Big Hero 6, and the water has been drained. And that's gonna be the Golden Gate Bridge right over there. Kind of a small Golden Gate Bridge. At the Pacific Wharf, they have an elote-inspired corn chowder in a sourdough bread bowl. 
When we were here not too long ago and made that video about eating vegetarian and vegan food, one of my favorite items that we got was the corn chowder at French Market. So when I saw that there was an elote like inspired corn chowder, I had to try it. This smells so good. And it has that cotija cheese and like chunks of corn. Looks like cilantro or something right on top. This tastes like a combination of tortilla soup mixed with corn chowder. Like it has like a little bit of spice in it. Maybe there's some peppers or something in there. But this is good. I like that the corn looks like it was actually like charred out on the grill. And then you know that the sourdough is amazing. This is a five out of five. Somehow it tastes like more savory than the one over at Disneyland. That one was more sweet. I think I like that one a little bit more, but this is still very good. So five out of five Peters. Yes. So our time is about to be called for our boarding group. So we're gonna head over to Tune Down and go on Mickey and Minnie's. I'm super excited for the queue because I've heard the queue is a lot better. Yeah, I'm excited too. I can't wait. I'm just so excited that this ride is in Disneyland forever now. Like that's so exciting. Who's a good boy? Yeah! Who's we, a good boy? You're a good boy! Who's, Who's a, a good boy? <laughs> we love Pluto! Pluto! Really Pluto! 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 Pluto. 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 We're about to go on uh, the ride. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Oh, fun. Do you like the ride? Bye, Pluto. Bye, Pluto. See you guys. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Wrong one, Peter. No. Yo! Happily ever after. Dum, 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 dum. A ticket to Disney when you got Ashley and Peter concert right here. Okay, so we got to Toontown, and bad news, the ride has closed down, and it's not gonna reopen until after fireworks. Let's go to World of Color, and then come back here after. What is going on here? Is this a dress or a shirt? Look at the collar. It looks like something from a different time. Is this something that they wore 100 years ago, you think, with this collar? This is kind of cool, though. It has a bunch of different, you know, prints and tickets and a bunch of stuff from Disneyland's history on there. They have that same pattern in a kid's button-up shirt. I feel like I like it a little bit better. You don't like the collar? Come on, Peter. I am obsessed with this lounge fly. I love how it has the, the dripping, the platinum dripping ears. I feel like the drip should be going all over it. Yeah? Oh, do you see the straps? The straps drip. 100 years of wonder. This is a purple hoodie sweatshirt. Has Mickey on the front. Does it have anything on the back? Oh, wow. Of course, it has the whole gang. Look at Chippendale. Even Chippendale. <laughs> yeah, I like the sweatshirt because it's very vintage. And it has the original lands right on the bottom there. Yeah, the only problem is a crop top. It's a crop top uh, hoodie? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of retro, I also like this white t-shirt. Yeah, I like it has Tinkerbell on there. They make the best merch for the kids. See how cool that retro Walt Disney's Disneyland shirt is. So now we finally found some adult t-shirt. This has like serious like Gatsby vibes to it. Oh yeah, you're right. What do you make out of these Mickey and Minnie's? I kind of love like it. They're like the statues, right? That they have they outside? They look like the statues, but they're actually kind of shimmery. Today they came out with this new collection. It's called the Eras Collection. And it's filled with all sorts of vintage stuff from wow. throughout the archives. What, why are his ears like back like that? I don't know, it's very strange. I like it a lot though for some reason. And they have a bunch of stuff with this Walt Disney Studios logo. These I, have got to be the most creative ears I've ever seen. I wish they had this on like a black t-shirt. I know I keep on saying that, but this is white or gray. And if I spell something, you know, I always spell something. That's what the am I gonna you do? have to take for fashion. Check out this awesome Mickey beret. This is kind of amazing. Yeah, our friend Nick was 
was wearing it. Yeah, it, Nick looked, and it, it looked really good on him. <laughs> okay, I think we found a new Christmas ornament that we need to buy. This is the original Hyperion Studios with Mickey on. I mean, they didn't have a large Mickey on top of it, right? I don't they think didn't? So. Oh, no. Mickey wasn't actually a giant? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, they have some other ornaments as well. This one is based on an older Mickey Mouse cartoon. Like that says the end. And I'm surprised you don't want this 100th. I know. Ornament has your favorites there. And they said the perfect ornament didn't exist. Well, I'm here to tell you that it does. Why is it everything I like is an ornament? Why is everything you like dripping? Peter was like, that dripping ornament is so cool. Hey. It is pretty <laughs> cool, I gotta say. I like that it's like actually kind of holographic. So over in Disney California Adventure, they have a lot more from this Eris collection, including this Walt Disney typewriter, which is a note card holder. And look, look at the keys on there. You got like some hidden Mickeys. One of the coolest things in this collection is this Walt Disney water tower lamp. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was when I saw the photos online. And how cool is this Walt Disney cartoonist coffee mug? I think Kitcher's gonna wanna get this. Question is, what does it say in the small print there? Let me see. <laughs> how cool is this magnifying glass? And they have a set of three journals as part of this collection. And we're gonna store your journals going to storm in between Mickey's feet. Look at those bookends. This is really cool. It's kind of like the old animation boards. Another thing that they're doing for Disney 100 is the cast members all have new name tags. So instead of it saying where they're from below their name, it actually has their favorite Disney character. And we ran into so many cast members today, had conversations about what their favorite characters are and why. I think it's a new, cool addition. Tonight we're doing something that we've never done before. We're going to the World of Color dessert party for the new World of Color One show. It's $89. I'll show you what it's like. With the dessert party, you get an assortment of cakes. You also get some like cheese and grapes. And you get a choice of beverages. You can get some coffee, tea, or hot cocoa, which is nice on a night like tonight. You can get some soda, bottled water, cherry breeze, or their specialty cocktails. So you can get some sparkling wine, beer, or the wonderful cooler, which is a vodka cocktail, which I'm getting. My greatest reward is to have the, the public appreciate and accept what I've done all these years. That, that is a great reward. One man, one dream. 100 years ago, Walt Disney set ripples of happiness and imagination in motion. He showed us how little ripples can become great waves. It just takes one. A dream that's calling out. Just imagine all the ways that it could start. Start the motion, stand alone, stir the ocean, be the hand that reaches out to the unknown.
influence. And it starts when we decide. Amazing. Nami! Emilio? What is that? I don't really know. You don't know. And you're eating it. You know how to fix it. This is your chance. time my dad took me to this jazz club. That's when I knew I was born to play. Your class was the only reason I went to school at all.
who you are or where you're from, you have the power to make a difference. It just takes one. I just want to leave you with this thought. It's just been a sort of dress rehearsal. We're just getting started. Remember, like Walt Disney, you have the power within to make a difference. Make your wave. So what did you think? I really enjoyed it. It's obviously not as good as the original World of Color. I don't think anything could ever top that, just because the World of Color song is like so iconic. But we talked to a lot of people today and everybody was really, really down on the show. And I didn't think it was that bad. Like I actually really enjoyed it. The Coco part was awesome, made me cry. The Moana part was awesome. I liked the Star Wars and Marvel parts. There's some licensing thing where they can't use actual clips from the movies. I feel like I would have preferred that. But in general, like I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was okay. I didn't love it. I also didn't hate it. I I think what whoever chose the song selections for this, like you have the whole Disney library. You have all these classic modern classics and you chose those songs. Like there was movies that I love almost every single song from and they picked songs I didn't care about. With the portals from Endgame, it should have been so epic. And because it was like illustrations, it was... I see, I liked it. It could have been better. It could have been exactly the scenes from the movie. But I actually really enjoy that. Like, I feel like uh, most of the characters were represented and it worked for me because they are comics. So like, yeah. that didn't bother me. It was more of the Star Wars stuff that I was kind of like, I enjoyed it, but like, it could have been better. Yeah. For the most part, I think I liked the Star Wars and Marvel sections, and I like there, there was stuff I liked from every section. It just, as a whole, didn't come together for me. And like, I also don't get like the whole point of the show is Walt was this like Walt was the one that like he was the drop that hit the water and caused the waves of that led to all these movies. And I don't feel the connective tissue of how it got from Walt to Marvel. <laughs> I mean, like. I don't know. That said, I would definitely see this again, but it's not like something, you know, that original World of Color. I came back weekend after weekend to see that. The dessert party. This is the first time we've ever done a dessert party. I appreciated being able to sit down. I thought like the selection of little treats were nice. They weren't anything like amazing. Is it worth $90? I think that depends, I don't know, it felt a little rushed. Like we didn't really get seated. We only had maybe like 10, 15 minutes before the show actually started. They were coming around with like to-go boxes before we even like started eating. I think you're only sitting there for like 25 minutes, at least like, and we had gotten there hours before to be ready and got the wristbands and everything. So it really felt rushed, but I think having a seat for the show, having a good view and those desserts and drinks, by the way, if you're gonna order alcohol or anything, order both of your drinks right away because they don't come back yeah. to take a second order. That is a pro tip. But if you see the second showing of World of Color on a night where the park closes, they do kind of like kick you out. Yeah. Like you don't have time. I was like, I wonder how long we could like sit here. I didn't realize the park had closed and they were kind of like, go home. So, but I don't know. Would I recommend doing it? If you've never done it, try it out. But I don't think it's gonna be something that we do like all the time or anything. Oh, beautiful. Wow. So it's 30 minutes until Disneyland closes and Mickey and Minnie's is supposedly open. So we're going to try to get on the ride using our virtual queue passes. Fingers crossed. I'm so excited. Are you excited? Yes. We did it. Look at all the posters here. They're like parodies oh, of real movie so cool. posters. Mickey has shrunk the nieces. Goofy Friday, like Freaky Friday. The absent-minded professor. <laughs> High school musical. Look at this one. The feisty ducks. I love how it's like a real movie theater standee. Yeah, is this temporary or is it here forever? It's kind of cool. I would buy that. That's yeah. awesome. I would get that tattooed on me. Yeah, I love the Rocketeer. That is awesome. Blasting off soon. How soon? One of my favorite movies ever, The Parent Trap, but it's The Chipmunk Trap. I love it. <laughs> and it looks like we're about to go into an exhibit, Mickey Through the Ears. And it was all started by a mouse. It was. It really was. 
It was all started by four because of a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go into that exhibit, we have a tribute to Toontown's hometown theater, including the first hot dog ever cooked, Do Not Eat. <laughs> Oh my god, it's the Steamboat Helm from Steamboat Willie. Oh my god, it actually moves. Yeah. How fun. I like that we're like literally the only people in here. This like actually worked out really well. <laughs> I love how they're presenting props from animated movies. Like they're like real life props. Oh no, it looks like this one got a little wet. We have Sorcerer Mickey's actual outfit. Can you believe that we're actually seeing this prop? Do you think anything magical actually happened to it? I don't know, does it? Okay, that's cool. <laughs> I honestly don't quite know how that even works. Oh wow, look at that. I love how it says it's the magic bean box. Like, <laughs> the magic beans just grew in size. And if you look down here, you can actually see the magic bean box. These are props from Pluto's Christmas tree. I love it. This is like, genius theming here. Like, I feel like this fits in so well with Toontown. And the theater, it's like you're seeing props from all these famous things. <laughs> oh, that's cool. It's a tribute to Mouser size. <laughs> so they not only have props, but they also have some costumes. Yeah, there's Mickey's iconic costume from the Prince and the Pauper. So the question here, are these all hidden Mickeys? Is this the most hidden Mickeys in the queue? I mean, technically, probably yes. I wonder how many hidden Mickey's I don't think they're that hidden, though. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Question is, is this a hidden Mickey right here? Yes. And we finally reached the concession area of this Toontown movie theater. And I love all the little details here. So wh which candy would you want to get? I want that giant pretzel is what I want. How cute is this hot dog? Oh my God. Okay, I actually did find a hidden Mickey. If you come to where the popcorn is, one of the popcorn kernels is shaped like Mickey. All of them are actually. Are they? Yeah. If you look at the popcorn kernels, they were all shaped like the Fab Five. You can see Mickey, Minnie. How cool is that? Like, how many hidden Mickeys are here? Even a Darkwing Duck Easter egg. And the dates on the register are of course, Mickey Mouse's birthday, the date that Steamboat Willie came out. This here Loki movie. Well, sure, Goofy, that sounds perfectly safe. Thanks. Be back in a jiffy to pick you all up. Right, everyone. Let's step into the cartoon world now. If you see Goofy, tell him he owes me money for these damages. Oh, we will. Don't <laughs> oh, I'll tell him. <laughs> so cool. This right is here. I love the cast member outfits here. They're so cool. Looks like they're like from an animated movie. Oh no! I must have hit that track switch! Goofy, quit! This is 
That's right. Everyone to your positions. Ready and... One, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, excellent. You're all waltzing so beautifully together. Oh. oh, 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 oh. Now, let's... is here in Toontown. It's exactly the same as Florida. I just feel like some of the sets are a little bit smaller and not like in a bad way. It's just like was kind of like you're so used to one thing and then you come yeah. to this and some like at the very end like it, the scenes were swapped like the end scene like it was on the, a different opposite side. Yeah. But it was so great. I freaking love this ride. This ride just makes you so happy. The song it's awesome. Yeah. I love it. It did feel a little bit more jerky then I remember the Orlando version. But again, I'm glad this is here. This is gonna be like one of those rides that we come on time and time again. It's awesome. If you wanna see the first time that we went on that ride in Florida, weeks before the world shut down, <laughs> oh, yeah. apparently stuff, uh, things could stop us now. Yeah. Click right over there. We wanna say thank you to some of our Patreons. That includes Eric, Kendall, JR, and Jay. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next adventure. Bye.